Good morning. Today we're reading the story of Half Chicken by Elma Flora Ada and illustrated by Kim Howard. Elma Flora Ada comes from a family of storytellers. She first heard the story of Half Chicken from her grandmother. It was one of her favorites as a child. She loved the folktale so much that she decided to write her own retelling of it. The illustrator is Kim Howard. Kim Howard has illustrated more than 25 children's books. Her style is full of color and detail. When she is not illustrating, she is painting and making collages. She also teaches students all, o all over the world about art. Our story today is a folk tale. A folk tale is a kind of traditional story, and it usually has a very simple plot that is meant to teach a lesson. So as we read the story, I want you to think about the lesson that they mean for us to learn from it. Usually in a folktale, the main characters are also animals that act like people, so they can talk and they can think, and they can do the same things that people can do. So here we go, page 316. Please follow along with your reading finger. Check each word as we go. Have you ever seen a weather vane? Do you know why there is a little rooster on one end spinning around to let us know which way the wind is blowing? Well, I'll tell you. It's an old, old story that my grandmother once told me, and before that, her grandmother told it to her. It goes like this. A long, long time ago on a Mexican ranch, a mother hen was sitting on her eggs. One by one, the baby chicks began to scratch, leaving their empty shells behind. One, two, three, four, twelve chicks had hatched, but the last egg still had not cracked open. The hen did not know what to do. The chicks were running here and there and she could not chase after them because she was still sitting on the last egg. Finally, there was a tiny sound. The baby chick was pecking at its egg from the inside. The hen quickly helped it break open the shell and at last the 13th chick came out into the world. Yet this was no ordinary chick. He had only one wing only one leg, only one eye, and only half as many feathers as the other chicks. It was not long before everyone at the ranch knew that a very special chick had been born. The ducks told the turkeys, the turkeys told the pigeons, the pigeons told the swallows, and the swallows flew over the fields, spreading the news to the cows grazing peacefully with their calves, the fierce bulls, and the swift horses. Soon the hen was surrounded by animals who wanted to see the strange chick. One of the ducks said, but he only has one wing. And one of the turkeys added, why, he's only a half chicken. From then on, everyone called him half chicken. And half chicken, finding himself at the center of all this attention, became very vain. One day, he overheard the swallows who traveled a great deal talking about him. Not even at the court of the Viceroy of Mexico City is there anyone so unique. Then Half Chicken decided that it was time for him to leave the ranch. Early one morning, he said his farewells, announcing, Goodbye, goodbye, I'm off to Mexico City to see the court of the Viceroy. And hip hop, hip hop, off he went, hippity hopping along on his only foot. Half Chicken had not walked very far when he found a stream whose waters were blocked by some branches. Good morning, Half Chicken. Would you please move the branches that are blocking my way? asked the stream. Half Chicken moved the branches aside, but when the stream suggested that he stay a while and take a swim, he answered, I have no time to lose. I'm off to Mex Mexico City to see the court of the Viceroy. And hip hop, hip hop, off he went, hippity hopping along on his only foot. A little while later, Half Chicken found a small fire burning between some rocks. The fire was almost out. Good morning, half chicken. Please fan me a little with your wing, for I am about to go out, asked the fire. Half chicken fanned the fire with his wing, and it blazed up again. But when the fire suggested that he stay a while and warm up, he answered, I have no time to lose. I'm off to Mexico City to see the court of the Viceroy. And hip hop, hip hop, off he went, hippity hopping along on his only foot. After he had walked a little while, Half Chicken found the wind tangled in some bushes. Good morning, Half Chicken. Would you please untangle me so that I can go on my way? asked the wind. 
Half Chicken untangled the branches, but when the wind suggested that he stay and play, and offered to help him fly here and there, like a dry leaf, he answered, I have no time to lose. I'm off to Mexico City to see the court of the Viceroy. And hip hop, hip hop, off he went, hippity hopping along on his only foot. At last, he reached Mexico City. Half Chicken crossed the enormous great plaza. He passed the stalls laden with meat, fish, vegetables, fruit, cheese, and honey. He passed the Parian, the market, where all kinds of beautiful goods were sold. Finally, he reached the gate of the Viceroy's palace. Good afternoon, said Half Chicken to the guards in fancy uniforms who stood in front of the palace. I've come to see the Viceroy. One of the guards began to laugh. The other one said, you'd better go in around the back and through the kitchen. So Half Chicken went, hip hop, hip hop, around the palace and to the kitchen door. The cook, who saw him, said, what luck! This chicken is just what I need to make a soup for the Viserion. And he threw Half Chicken into the kettle of water that was sitting on the fire. When Half Chicken felt how hot the water was, he said, Oh, fire, help me. Please don't burn me. The fire answered, You helped me when I needed help. Now it's my turn to help you. Ask the water to jump on me and put me out. Then Half Chicken asked the water, Oh, water, help me. Please jump on the fire and put him out so that he won't burn me. And the water answered, You helped me when I needed help. Now it's my turn to help you. And he jumped on the fire and put him out. When the cook returned, he saw that the water had spilled on the, and the fire was out. This chicken has been more trouble than he's worth, exclaimed the cook. Besides, one of the ladies in waiting just told me that the Viserion doesn't want any soup. She wants to eat nothing but salad. And he picked half chicken up by his only leg and flung him out the window. When half chicken was tumbling through the air, he called out, Oh, wind, help me, please. And the wind answered, You helped me when I needed help. Now it's my turn to help you. And the wind blew fiercely. He lifted half chicken higher and higher until the little rooster landed on one of the towers of the palace. From there, you can see everything you want, half chicken with no danger of ending up in the cooking pot. And from that day on, weathercocks have stood on their only leg, seeing everything that happens below, and pointing whichever way their friend the wind blows. Don't forget to practice your story two times this week with an adult or an older sibling. Um, and if you have a chance to partner read it on Wednesday with a friend, go ahead and call or conference with a friend and read it with them. Have a great week, guys. I miss you.